Hi guys, today we're looking at FXGL physics, um, primarily the high, um, sorry, the heavyweight physics, which is implemented uh, by using an adapted version of the um, box duty integration. So we've got two physics engines. One is lightweight, um, FXGL's own version, which is mainly used for collision section and um, when collision shapes are simple. For more complex collisions and for physics simulations, we use the heavyweight, which is um, the box to the integration. So I've got two example demos. Um, these come from the FXGL samples module, which you can find um, inside one of the modules in the repository. Uh, the link is in the video description, so you can find it there. So this one is a game of snooker where you can, um, well, just play the game, I suppose. It doesn't really have any uh, sort of gameplay related mechanics in terms of points and stuff like that. But it shows how you can use um, rigid body dynamics to um, essentially build a game similar to that. <clears throat> the second demo is this one, which is similar to Angry Birds, I guess, where you have a structure of some sort and you break that structure by uh, shooting stuff, shooting some stuff at it, um, something like that. And uh, we're going to look at this one, at the um, shoot stuff at the structure demo. And the code for this is very similar in terms of the uh, physics engine usage, so you can derive all the information that you need from uh, this video. So what we're looking at is the FXGL samples module. It's got two um, packages, advanced and intermediate, that will be of interest. Advanced is where you'll find the snooker physics sample, which is that. It's not too big. It's about 200 plus lines. Um, but the one we're looking at is this rigid body physics sample which comes from the intermediate package. <coughs> right, so let's have a look. Um, I'm going to collapse everything. It's control shift minus um, if you're using IntelliJ. Uh, these are the imports. Um, this sample is standalone. You can just pick it up, add it to your project, and you can run it, uh, provided the project has a dependency on FXGL. In terms of settings, that's straightforward. Just set 720p and we're good to go. Um, let's have a look at input. There is literally just single input, which is we're going to add an action. Uh, we're using user action, uh, as in we're not using domain specific language extensions for FXGL because we need something a bit more complex. We need to have action begin, action end which is not quite uh, common for most actions. Most actions will use just one. In this case, we want to capture the X and Y um, of the cursor when we click. So just at that, uh, just in that frame. And then when we let go, um, we want to spawn a bullet, which is in our case, the ball sprite by using the current X and Y of the cursor. So when we let go, um, and then the difference between the two gives you the vector, which is something that we can use to drive the bullet's direction. And you'll notice that in the <coughs> demo. So currently I've clicked, I started my um, action and then I'm going to draw a line and let go. And then you can see that the ball will uh, follow that trajectory. Uh, let's look at the spawn ones and then we'll look inside init game. So public static void main is, I'm not even going to say anything about it. It's exactly the same as you would expect it. Spawn vertical and spawn horizontal uh, relates to these things. So some of them, some of the structure blocks, I suppose, are horizontal and others are vertical. 
we need to have the physics component. So in lots of the games that we've built on this channel, we did not use a physics component uh, per se because that's how you tr transform an entity into a physics entity or a physics object as it were. When you do that, there are a few things that you're changing in terms of the properties. First, you are now saying the physics entity is now going to be managed by the physics world. So you lose control over things like the transform, um, the transformation applied to the entity. So you can no longer just position it where you want inside the game uh, once you attach physics component, because now it's a physics object. It's being controlled by the physics world. I suppose it's like in the real world you, where you don't really um, change the position of an object by setting its x, y, and z value, right? You're changing its position, you're moving an object in the real world by applying some force to it. That force gets translated to acceleration, depending on the mass, and then, you know, um, laws of motion. But when we use entities just as normal entities, we're able to set its x, y, z um, just directly. We can't do that now because of the physics component. We have to apply forces, and that's something you're going to see um, later on in other methods. So um, fixture tells us what kind of uh, physics properties the shape is going to have. These are just arbitrary-ish. Like you need to essentially get to them um, by trial and error. Just play around with these values and see what works best. Body type. Uh, there are three body types. You have dynamic, static, and kinematic. Kinematic is where you control the thing it's uh, yourself by setting velocities. Dynamic is something that gets controlled by the physics world automatically, like gravity gets applied to it. Uh, when it hits something, it kind of bounces back because of rigidity. <coughs> Uh, which is actually another property of uh, physics entities because if, a, if an entity has a bounding box and it has a physics component, then it has what we call a rigid body, um, something that cannot occupy the same space as some other body. Um, again, like in the real world where you can't have two uh, things that occupy the same space. Um, well, I suppose for large things, if we're talking about sort of quantum level, then you have bosons, I think, which can occupy the same space, uh, but fermions can't. Uh, but don't quote me on that. Let's think sort of big uh, scale, where two things cannot occupy the same space. So in exactly the same way um, in a physics-based game, if two things overlap, they will need to be resolved um, and the resolution will happen by the physics world, which will try to move things apart. <clears throat> um, and that could lead to some problems. For example, if you're thinking um, in any of the 3D games that you've played recently, uh, have you noticed when you load the game, your characters may spawn just above your uh, ground, like just above the level? for a fraction of a second, and then they kind of naturally just fall by uh, because of gravity. They normally do that because um, you don't want your physics objects, rigid bodies, stuck inside other rigid bodies, because the resolution may happen the other way, like your character can fall through the ground, um, and then lots of interesting bugs can happen. So in order to avoid that, um, you'll need to make sure that body types are dynamic uh, and the resolution should happen normally by the physics world itself. Which is the thing that does happen when we, for example, just drop a ball here. You can see that the ball doesn't really overlap with anything. It collides with it, it touches other things, but it never goes through them. And you can see that the same is true for um, other physics entities in this uh, scene. <clears throat> uh, it's just loading a texture as per normal, and nothing interesting about it. 
and that is normal as well as in it doesn't have any specific physics code related to it so this is essentially the new bit that I haven't really covered in any of other uh, videos spawn horizontal is very similar you can see the density is different and you can see that the shape of the texture is different as in it's horizontal as opposed to the vertical all right let's have a look at the ball object so when we spawn our bullet uh, its density is much higher so it gives it a bit more kind of uh, force i guess not necessarily force but kind of when you hit something it's it can go easily through um the structure like that and if we make the density much much smaller then it's very difficult for the ball to go through things so this is where trial and error comes from just play around with these values see what works best for your scenario for your game and then go from there right this is an important bit because when we created our physics component when we attached it to our entity at that point um the physics world still doesn't know about the entity physics the physics world will start populating its physics data after you've added the entity to the game world which is why we need this thing we can't just set linear velocity immediately it has to be done after the physics uh, for that object has been initialized which is why we have this um, very useful callback and this is another thing how you move something so instead of just setting its position at x y and z you set its linear velocity or you apply some force to it in this scenario we're just setting the velocity directly saying well this is the vector use that vector to figure out how to move in the physics space uh, alternatively you would do something like this physics uh, apply force and then you can have uh, it applied on a very specific point uh, as well as um, the magnitude of the vector which determines how much force you're applying <clears throat> the physics component really makes sense uh, only if you have a bounding box because that bounding box is going to be translated to the rigid body shape so that's worth noting um, these are trivial yeah, everything else is fine. Okay, let's have a look in here. Well, actually, there isn't much code in here anyway. Uh, that's just setting the background to color black. This is a very useful, convenient function that allows us to set bounds to your screen so that stuff doesn't, you know, just fall through. To give you an example, I can just comment this out and you will see what's going to happen. Since there is nothing that bounds the screen, there are no boundaries, uh, as in physics boundaries, everything just falls. Um, you know, there is nothing to collide against. And the 40 is the thickness of the walls to create around the screen. Um, and these are just placement values. We're going through some values uh, in X and Y, and then we spawn vertical or horizontal um, physics objects. So that is pretty much it for uh, this overview, in which we looked at how to create a physics component 
how to change its physics properties using the uh, fixture definition and body type as well. And then finally, we add the physics component to uh, the entity that we're creating. And you can also have a look at the Mario example, which is basically a generic platformer, which also uses similar physics properties in order to drive the character as well as the uh, other objects inside the game world. One thing to note here is that once you do apply your physics component to an entity, you lose control of certain properties such as the transform component because you will now need to apply forces it is still possible to overwrite it directly, like there is a method for that. You can overwrite the angle as well as the position of a physics object, but that is not always recommended, particularly if you're breaking the integrity of the physics simulation, because you might be putting something inside something else, and then the simulation may break and may result in more or less undefined behavior, something that you don't want. Uh, the other thing to note would be that you don't really talk to the physics engine directly. All of the stuff here is FXGL's own API, which makes it uh, more consistent with everything else that you use in FXGL. So it kind of simplifies the uh, learning aspect of the engine. On that note, uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any further suggestions on what areas I should be covering in future tutorials, let me know. Thanks, and I'll see you later.